Let's see. So hey, my name is Paul Hayes. I am a mental illness sufferer. Mental illness is a huge part of my life. My sisters have mental illness. My cousins have mental illness. My second cousin, who's only 14, has just been admitted to hospital. I'm also a developer and a tech entrepreneur, so that's why I feel like this is the right place to kind of bring up this subject. Um, my main goal is to give hope to one individual. He's not in this room right now, but I know he's watching. Um, let's talk to you, man. So tech entrepreneurship, Silicon Valley, what's really happening in Silicon Valley? It's actually quite scary. Like, there's a hell of a lot of mental illness with entrepreneurs. So as this uh, psychiatrist with his study confirms, um, a lot of entrepreneurs, I know a lot of really successful ones, I've been very lucky in my time to meet some guys that had ridiculous, ridiculous success in their life. A lot of them have ADHD, bipolar, depression, hypersensitivity. A lot of them are alcoholics and drug addicts, actually. That just kind of masks, like, whatever mental illness is below. Because if you don't have a good psychiatrist, you're probably going to abuse drugs or alcohol. But if you do have a good psychiatrist, life gets exponentially easier. So this is me. So I'm a tech entrepreneur. I'm a React, React Native developer. I'm a biohacker. I'm actually planning to become Switzerland's first bulletproof coach. I have a bulletproof coach. I'll explain that very soon. I just want to be super honest about this topic, and I'm hoping somebody in this will come chat with me afterwards, because if anybody in this room is suffering, like if you're doing fine, don't worry. We don't need to talk. But if, if life's really, really hard, I just want you to know you're not alone. So I have Erlen syndrome, that's why I wear these um, glasses. They're not sunglasses, they're prescription. Um, I don't perceive things properly without these glasses. I can't really walk upstairs properly. I get headaches really easily. I didn't even know I had it till recently. Uh, and these glasses <laughs> changed my life. I've got bipolar, ADHD, hypersensitivity, and basically like Wolverine, like I have senses like a dog, actually. Uh, that's why I smoke. I smoke to desensitize. I drink to desensitize. I do a lot of things to desensitize. I take medicine to desensitize. With, if you think I'm talkative now, you should see me off meds, honestly. Uh, I've been crazy three times. I ended up in mental hospital last year. And just a quick story about that. When I went to mental hospital last year, I was there for a night. And the first night... Uh, I had a terrible night. I'm not going to explain the story, but you can ask me afterwards. It's a cool story about Elon Musk. Uh, but then in the morning, I rang my friend. I was like, man, you're not going to believe this, but I'm in mental hospital. can't believe this. And he's like, how long do you think you've been there, man? It's like, I got here last night. He's like, man, it's been seven days. Like, when I went to hospital, the first seven days were blackout. That was tough. Like, and I didn't believe him until I looked at the newspaper and saw the date. True story. This is my favorite slide. This is my favorite, inspired by Reginald. It's the part where we all get to breathe, because it all goes downhill from here. Are you ready? Are you ready to have some fun? I want to have some fun. But first we breathe. I got to calm down. So I really like Mel Robbins, the five second rule. So I'm just going to use five second rule to calm down. You should, you should, because you're about to come up. So it's like, it goes like this. You go, you count backwards, you take a big breath, count backwards from five. You don't have to do this. I'm going to do this. You should definitely do this. <laughs> All right, you ready? Because he, he's right to tell you about my story. So I was very, very, very sick. You have no idea how sick I was. I was super chronic fatigued, brain fog every day. I was using like Red Bulls and Monsters to get through the day. My wife thought I had Asperger's syndrome. And then I came across this guy called Dave Asprey in Bulletproof. And I started to watch and read everything to do with Bulletproof. And this guy saved my life. He's got Ellen syndrome too. You'll see he's got the, the fancy glasses as well. He's got ADHD too. He's got Asperger's syndrome. And this guy's been healing himself of all these problems. Literally, you can heal yourself of mental illness. That's the first thing I want to say to that guy at home. You can heal yourself. Like, it's possible. Like, I'm one of the happiest guys you'll ever meet, and my life's destroyed, but I'm super happy with my life. And this guy's my coach. This guy's the one that's training me to become a bulletproof coach so I can become Switzerland's first bulletproof coach. 
And this is how crazy my life is, right? I had a chat with him on Friday. I said, Nick, I want to become a speaker and talk about mental health. And he said, well, we'll do it. <laughs> and here I am. And I did it <laughs> because of Cecil. <laughs> so am I crazy? No, seriously, am I the crazy one? Or is mental illness like the least talked about topic, in, not just in Switzerland, but the entire European tech conference scene. It doesn't make any sense. So many tech entrepreneurs are bipolar. Like Elon Musk is a crazy mother. Seriously. Like he's crazy. Like he thinks he's going to be the first man to send somebody to the Mars. That, that's insane. What about Steve Jobs? He took LSD. That's insane. Like all of my super, super successful entrepreneur friends and all of the failures, they're all, trust me, they're all... Bipolar in some way, trust me on that. And the nootropics abuse in Silicon Valley is way out of control. So many people burn out. So many people burn out. And I know a lot of them. And I'm here to be the panda. My life goal from now on is to be a mental health advocate. And like, can I swear? No, probably not. So I'll be careful. <laughs> but this, I want to be the panda about mental health. And these guys are like, the office workers, and I want to be the panda from now on. And Cecil's going to be the baby panda. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I want to be a panda. I'm looking for other pandas. If anybody else wants to be a panda. Oh, wait, wait, this is funny too, wait. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll stop that. Wait, wait. <laughs> Don't say no to Panda. Never say no to Panda. And I want to be like that with mental health. So that's me. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, how do I get to the next slide? Here we go. Cecil. So I have to say a big thank you. Before I bring Cecil on stage, I have to say a big thank you. Like on Friday, I asked for a diversity ticket. Like I got mental illness. I got no job. If anybody's hiring, 20%. I can only work 20% right now. Please, please talk to me after the show. And they gave me a free diversity ticket. So thank you. Thank you for that option, really. That's awesome. You guys are awesome for doing that. And then I got here, and the first person I met was Cecil. And Cecil's going to come on the stage and have a talk. Come, clap, applause, Cecil. <laughs> and Cecil has no idea what we're going to talk about. And actually, nor do I, actually. Uh, you might need to turn it on. That would help. There you go. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, you can. That's cool. I really don't know why I'm here, so cool. tell me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come here, come here. I just want to, like, what happened when we met yesterday? So we met, and what happened? You put a sticker on my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're a rock star, right? And then, and then I said, I'm a speaker. I'm not speaking today, but I'm a speaker. Then what did you say? I don't remember. <laughs> you said something like, I don't know if you're playing games with me or if you're being real, but you were like, oh, yeah, you're that guy speaking tomorrow, right? And here we are. <laughs> this was all your idea. You realize that? I honestly thought that you're really on the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the glasses? Like... <laughs> no, because you asked for a speaker badge, and I was like, oh, ah, okay. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, well, see, my, my badge isn't as, as bipolar as I am. Yeah, On so one side, I'm a speaker. Today, I'm a speaker. Yesterday, I was a attendee. Now, you got a speaker. Oh, wow. You got, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's really, that, yeah, that's really bipolar. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, but I saw your talk yesterday, and I cool. have to tell that I, uh, I was very interested in the topic, and that's why cool. I came to you afterwards, because I feel like, Mental health is a big issue, and I myself um, have got to know quite many people with that, also in the tech 
scene. And so, yeah, I felt yeah. like it's it's cool topic to talk to, and I hope that you're going to enjoy it. I don't know what's my part in it now. <laughs> but like, like, <laughs> honestly, I just want to start a conversation. Like, I hope people after this come to you and talk to her. I hope you guys after this come and talk to me. I just want to get people talking about it, because nobody fucking talks about it. It's really sad. It's actually really sad. Um, so, yeah, maybe, like... Um, I think it's very interesting that you have bipolar. I think it's very interesting because I feel like that's one of the things most people have in the scene. And why you said yeah. that is like, you yeah. have to be so crazy in a way to do certain ideas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and maybe you can explain to people what bipolar is because I don't know, who of you knows what bipolar is? Like, that's not a lot of hands. <laughs> so, so bipolar is like this. Like, some days I'm bouncing off the walls and I'll, I'll be doing laps. Off medicine, I'll be doing laps and I'll be doing push-ups just to calm down. And other days I have no energy. Like, none. And, like, it's a struggle to get out of bed. And I just can't do shit. And I can't. I have no productivity. And it's an absolute nightmare to go to work. And I sit in front of my computer and I do nothing. I sit there for eight hours. I try and do the most simplest tasks. And I can't produce even ten lines in eight hours of reasonable code. Then I just take shortcuts. Like, I'm a really good developer. I'm better than most around me, so I can kind of, like, call meetings. Yeah, I call lots of meetings when I'm depressed, actually. Uh, and I just waste time. And, but when I'm... Because I've got ADHD, when I'm interested in something, I can code, like, 16 hours a day. Like, I've been doing 3 a.m. starts for a very long time. That's actually one of the reasons I end up in hospital. When I code, I can easily code 16 hours straight. I forget to eat, I forget to drink, and this is why bipolar tech entrepreneurs probably the ones that succeed, because they're crazy enough to think they can change the world, but also they have this ability to hyper-focus uh, and just binge code, binge code, binge code. And then people like me, like bipolar people can talk, like I'm one of the best salesmen you'll ever see, actually, but I've never, I have read a book, but that's about it. But I can pretty much convince anybody to do anything. I convinced you to let me speak today. That was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> you just put my name on the slide and show me that I made your session. That's it was so easy. Convincing. It was so easy. And then I told you you were talking today. And I didn't even give you a choice. At least I asked you, Reginald. I asked Reginald. I asked Kareem. I've got two, two more speakers coming up very soon. But What do you... Yeah, yeah you, and, you and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, why, why do you think it is essential for the tech community to know about that? Why do you think the tech community is more, um, should know more about it? Basically? Because all the team leads in the room, like bipolar people are usually incredibly intelligent. That's why they're bipolar, because they've got a super high functioning brain. And most of the best developers I've ever met are super fragile people. And these super fragile people are turning down jobs for 200 grand in the super stressful bank environments to work at startups for 80 grand. Like, if you guys understood mental illness, if you talked about it, if you were super supportive, you could build phenomenal teams full of super genius people. And resources are everything to a company, especially to a startup, when you've only got like five developers or something. Like, I work best in teams of five. And I tell you what, my team of five can build more than bank teams of 50 honestly, because I work with super talented developers and I get that they're super fragile. I think you guys could learn a lot from just talk about it. Just learn and care. Like, if you're a team lead, the people below you, like, I'm always bottom up. Like, if you're a manager, your job is to support the workers, actually, in my opinion. Your job is not to be a boss. Your job is to care about the people below you, train them, mentor them, that's when you're going to see super high productivity. And I've seen super high productivity teams, and I've seen super low productivity teams, and the difference is always the team leader. Whether or not like, he's supportive and caring, or whether or not he's a boss, 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 Zurich-style Swiss boss. So, like, about 5% of people have bipolar, I guess. I'm not yeah. sure about the data, but that's quite a high percentage, I guess. Um, when someone has someone like that in the team, maybe the person is unaware of it because very totally. like a lot of people are never diagnosed with it. Totally, um, totally. What can you tell a team leader or just coworkers, like all of us are, and we all may know 
five percent of hundred or like five people in our lives. What what do you want them to know? Like what should they find out? What should they care? What are maybe signals that they can see, okay, okay. maybe I need to like see okay. that. That's cool. If you have a super high functioning brain guy in your team, which most of us would have, at least one of these guys, and they're super fragile and they start missing days at work or they start really underperforming from their level, that's a red flag. Not it's a red flag, sit the guy or girl down, have a chat and just say, look, I'm worried about you, like I care about you, what's, what's going on? And just talk to them. The best thing any team leader or manager or boss can do for somebody that's underperforming, that's a genius, like super high functioning brain, but seriously underperforming, get them to see a doctor. Like you can't help them. Get them to see a psychiatrist, get them to see a psychologist, get them to see a professional. Like, I can't help anybody, actually. If anybody asks me for help, I'll just say, hey, my psychiatrist, here's, here's her number. My psychologist, here's his number. Like, that's the only advice I ever give, actually. Um, I think it's really good that you said that about caring, because I know from my own company that we had once a girl, she was very new, and oh, yeah. um, she was very close to a burnout, um, and we all didn't really know. And then my boss really sat down with her, and he was like, hey... I care about you, like, what can we do for you? Like, um, what is happening then? Mostly it's not because of the work you do. Very often it's because of, scare you're scared of different things, yeah. you have different backgrounds, you have other issues in your yeah. life, whatever, and yeah. this all causes you to stress out. Um, so yeah, I think that's just one of the most important things you can do, like everywhere, with everything, just care about people. Yeah, and totally. be there Preach for it. them. Preach it. You should do the rest of the talk. No. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, no, she's awesome. Please. So what are the next slides? Because I don't like The next to slide is Reginald. <laughs> Reginald, my man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Oh, up to you, up to you, man. It's your life. Ah, it was Cecil's idea. Oh, oh. It wasn't my idea. I pushed an idea. You know? <laughs> you know, coders code and others sell ideas. That's what they do. Man, I just want to say thank you. Like, really, Reginald went and talked with everybody and got me here today. And I'm super grateful. And he's my future manager, actually. <laughs> he doesn't know this yet. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I must be having a mental breakdown. I'm sorry. I heard manager. Okay. <laughs> But man, I was talking to you last night and you were basically telling me that you wanted to change the world and make an impact in your own way, right? Yeah. Can you want to just explain, like, what is your next, what's your vision? I, I, and I want to explain to you the difference between a visionary and mental illness and explain to you that actually this, the line is thin. It's super thin. So what, what is your vision for your future? What do you, how do you want to make an impact? I'm trying to figure out the last time I was put on the spot like this in my life. Uh. <laughs> And I can't figure it out. Um, <laughs> so, all right. Let's make a parallel. Uh, you take a great coder, uh, and he works, let's say, in a bank. I think that is one of the saddest things mm -hmm. uh, of our generation. Mm -hmm. You have brilliant minds that are seduced by, you know, the corporate world. And I'm not, it's, not, it's not against the corporate world. You need corporations, and you need... Those companies are big for a reason. But you take minds that are capable of literally changing the way we... We learn the way we see medicine, health, technology, and they go and maintain a software that does, you know, an algorithm that makes some people very richer. And yeah. um, I think that's what a waste. What a and waste. And these people eventually, they, they, they just, they're unhappy at work and they decide mm -hmm. to go and do something else. And next thing you know, they're building, uh, I don't know, Calm. The app, or mm, cool. um, or something meaningful mm -hmm, for for mm -hmm. for an NGO or whatever. Cool. Well, my my um, my skill is is to me is relative. My skill is talking to people, and mm -hmm. yes, it You're took me a long time that. to figure out that it is a skill, and also that the number one people who are interested in that skills are politicians. So my like you know politics and parties and stuff, and they approach me and they ask me, why aren't you doing politics? It's because for me, fundamentally, if I have to use that skills for that purpose, it's the equivalent of being in a corporation and coding. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to give you an example. Some of you guys are probably doing brilliant things, and I figure if I can use a voice or my voice to promote something that I think is meaningful, 
then that's the impact I'm looking for. That's, that's the main little difference. I can make a lot of money or be very influential in other fields, but I do feel there needs to be purpose. Are you even getting paid for this, honestly? Are you volunteering? I don't know. Is that secret information? Do I, I, do I no, declare? I just... I, I, get paid, I get paid enough like, to travel here and stay... Cover costs. Okay, and then that's so you fine. just cover, cover... That's awesome, man. Thank you. Can Round of applause for Reginald, honestly. Let's chat, let's chat later. Next one is Kareem. Good luck. <laughs> now, I was chatting with Kareem last night, and he struck me as a genius, literally. No, not really. If you talk to him long enough, he's got a super, super, super high-functioning brain. Like, I'm guessing you're incredibly good at your job. What do you do? Uh, I'm a consultant, and... Okay, uh, consultant. Uh, working a lot with databases. How good are you? Like, how many people can can work at your level, like? Honestly, I don't think, I don't see myself as a genius. Uh, I think, yeah, I'm good at what I'm doing. I don't master everything. Uh, I'm ready to, uh, to learn quickly. Yeah, that's true. I'm Can learning learn quickly. quickly. Yeah. That, that's a talent, maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I love challenges. Uh, it's not like, uh, I, I, there are people that want to work just to, to get money and do thanks things not too complicated. Me, I like the challenges of doing something like, okay, it looks a bit crazy to do. And uh, yeah, okay, let's try. Uh, 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 I didn't succeed a lot of time. Like, uh, I did some projects, nobody used them because uh, of politics. Yeah, cool. and, we, all, we all have failures, man. But uh, yeah, uh, anyway, uh, I think I did a good job and I was happy with that. And yeah, I don't master anything, but uh, I have tons of self skills and I'm learning quickly. Are I'm you, interested, I'm curious. And you're like a Google core developer, right? Like, what do you. No, no, no. What, what, no, no. what, what did you uh, say before? I, I'm, I'm working on a, on a project Golang, a web framework, even if some people said it. Uh -huh, it's cool. not that good, but. Uh, and I don't know really. When, I, when uh, they asked me, I was like very happy because what I did, you, uh, I did few PR on very simple functionality that I needed mm -hmm. for an app that I was developing for fun. I, I was helping other people that were starting because I thought, okay, the smart guys, let them do complicated stuff. Helping the beginners, I can do it, I think. Yeah, so cool, man. I started like this. I started working on documentation. And uh, one day, uh, the, the guy started, uh, the, the main developer asked me, yeah, do you want to be part of our core team of this open source project. I'm like, oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's an honor. And uh, yeah, uh, we had a meeting uh, maybe two weeks ago, and I still don't know what I'm doing with them because they're so smart. And uh, yeah, for me, it, it, it's an honor. Uh, the first complicated PR that I did, it was rejected and rewrite, rewrote, completely rewrote, written by the main developer. I didn't take it bad because I learned a lot with what he did. And I think because I did this first PR, he pushed him to do the good one. So I was happy. That's really cool. Let me, let, let, let me cut in for a second. So like this guy is an amazing developer. And honestly, like I would love to have him on my team. Like seriously, like he's doing documentation, he's training juniors, like this guy's amazing. Now I, I want to offer you two jobs. 200 grand in a super stressful job, maybe at a bank or I don't know, wherever. Super stressful, high intensity, 200 grand or 150 grand in a really cool startup, super supportive, really calm, what would you choose? I will not, the money is not something important because first, I can live even with 70 grand. I, I have friends that live with much less. They, 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 they didn't go to university, they, did, they do amazing job like, uh, he's a plumber, he, one of my best friends is a plumber and it's amazing what he can do, but because he didn't go to university, he can get the same salary that we have the opportunity to get. For me, that's something crazy in this world, but it's not the goal of this conference. And also, um, yeah, for me, if I can live, fair enough. I, I want to do some stuff that I love. Cool. Uh, I, the thing is, stressful thing could be interesting in the way that, for me, doing something boring, uh, it's a, it's a problem. So I, I want that they take care of what I want, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But 
I would say not stressful. Also, I'm not that interested because the, the, that means there is no challenge. Yeah. I need the challenge. I need something to push me like, okay, this looks like impossible to do, but let's do it. So if you're a team lead or if you're a manager or if you're a boss and you want to hire the next generation of amazing talent, you've got to care about these super high functioning brain people because they don't care about money anymore. You can't tempt them with money. Like, thank you. Sure. Question mark, is there anybody that wants to share a story? Anybody at all? Look at you, Julia. <laughs> David, anybody at all? That's right, let me move forward. The biggest, best piece of advice I can give anybody suffering mental illness, I swear to God, is this. Vulnerability equals freedom. This changed my life. This one so, so, so simple piece of advice changed my life. The more I talk about it, the more I'm open to it, the more I talk with my psychiatrist, my psychologist, the more I talk with my boss when I work, the more I talk with those around me. Like The first thing is they tell me, oh, Paul, we already knew that. Like It's obvious something's wrong with you. And the second thing is they say, it's like, okay, how can we help in a supportive environment? And if they're not supportive, then talk to Rockstar Recruiting. Like, they're sponsoring this for a reason. <laughs> Seriously. And Federline from Rockstar is amazing. She, I, she's really, she cares about me. I really, really appreciate her. Um, just to pull it back into tech entrepreneurship and who I am. So my name is Paul. I founded Seven Right. I raised 250000 from the very first investor of PayPal. Peter Davison literally gave Elon Musk the idea to do email payments. Um, Peter Davison says I'm probably even a better entrepreneur than Elon Musk, but the reason why I failed is probably because I have, you know, such a huge mountain to climb with my mental illness. But, you know, like, um, that company failed in a big ball of fire, but a new company has started out of that, and I've got 10,000 users, so watch, watch this space, watch this space. Like, I, I have that never-give-up attitude that Elon has. Peter Davison's the smartest guy I know. Um, so if you understand how the PayPal Mafia works, the PayPal Mafia works like this, like Peter invests in Elon, and then Elon had big success. And a lot of these guys were like high up in PayPal, and when they got their big payout, then they started all these companies, and then they had payouts, and then they're high up, like generation, generation, generation. So like almost the entire Silicon Valley is all this PayPal Mafia. And seriously, like meeting being part of the PayPal Mafia is ridiculous. So I met Peter, I had a beer with him for 10 minutes, six weeks later I raised a quarter of a mil. That's what it's like being in the PayPal Mafia. Like, it's insane. Um, I just wish that <laughs> I didn't get sick. Uh, every single one of us matters. Like, mental illness is a, <laughs> has serious consequences. Aaron Schwartz, founder of Reddit, suicide. Austin Hines, tech entrepreneur, suicide. This guy I left for last on purpose. My second investor actually was a guy that invested in diaspora. And so he got a first-hand experience of what it's like. This kid, Ilya, was under so much stress. He got and invested a lot of money. Even Mark Zuckerberg invested in diaspora. So much stress. I feel for this guy so much. And he's su suicide. Like... We can save lives. If we talked about this more, we would save lives. I promise you that. I'm here to give hope for the 25%. Like, it's not really about me. Like, I'm, I'm actually a pretty happy guy, actually, even though my life's kind of destroyed. But I'm just here to say that, like, you can rebuild your brain. Like, a lot of these medicines that people with mental illness take turn them into zombies. And I'm here to say you can rebuild your brain. I've done it. My sister's doing it. Like, I've seen it time and time again. Um, there is hope. There's real hope. You can have a phenomenal life. My life, I'm one of the happiest guys you'll ever meet, I promise. I just want to play a quick video full of advice for anybody that's struggling, especially the guy back home that I dedicate this uh, whole talk to. Um, wait, 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 go back, ah, go back. Great question from Ashley, very important one. She wants to know my thoughts on depression, healing, and personal struggle. So um, here are my thoughts. First of all, you guys know that I have suffered with anxiety my entire life. Chris and I have two children that have suffered with significant anxiety too. I had serious postpartum depression when Sawyer, our daughter who's now 17, was born. And when I say serious, I mean hardcore meds, 
no nursing, around the clock supervision, serious. So when it comes to any kind of depression or mental health issue, what do I think about it? I think they're real. I don't think that we do enough in this country to remove the stigmatism, and I don't think there's anything wrong with having a mental health issue, either with yourself or with somebody that you love. I think about mental health a lot like I think about diabetes. People that have diabetes have um, an inefficient physical system for processing insulin, which is why you need to inject yourself with more of it. When you have a mental health issue, part of your wiring is insufficient to help you process mm -hmm. day to day life. That's it. And there are certain chemicals that are helping you. There are certain therapies that will help you. So here's the deal. The way I feel about it is this. This is not something to ignore. If you have depression, if you have anxiety, if you have post-traumatic stress disorder, if you have any kind of mental health condition, it's nothing to be ashamed of, and it's nothing to hide, and it's something to hit head on with. Mm -hmm. um, there's one thing, one thing, that if you did every single day, no joke, it would make an extraordinary difference in whatever mental health issue you're struggling with, and that is exercise. And the reason why I say this is not based on my own personal experience. It's based on the fact that the, um, I think it's the American Psychiatric Association. This is coming from Dr. John Rady, a, a friend of mine who has written a ton of books uh, about not only ADHD, but also the benefits of exercise and what it has on your brain. But he's also a professor at Harvard and a practicing um, clinician. And this is his area of expertise. And one of the things that they now mandate as a diagnosis for anybody with depression or anxiety or any mental illness, frankly, is you've got to exercise every day. And the reason you've got to exercise every day is because what we know about human beings is that when you physically move, your physiology changes and that changes your brain. Yes. Getting your heart rate up, getting outside, breathing, feeling connected, getting out of your house, mm -hmm. which may make you feel depressed and trapped. Doing that every day, that physical push. You don't have to run. You don't have to go to an aerobics class. Get outside with your dog in the woods. Walk with a good friend for two or three miles. Doing that every single day not only moves your body, which changes your mind. It gets you out of your physical environment, which is one of the things that people with depression tend to have a hard time doing. And it also creates a bit of momentum and a bit of a routine in your life. You take on just that single thing. Get outside and exercise every single day as if your life depends upon it because you know what it does your brain needs it your body needs it your mental health needs it so you know in closing be open don't be ashamed get the help that you need if you want to start doing something today that you can manage every single day you can't go wrong with forcing yourself to exercise. And by the way, what can you use to get your butt out the door? <laughs> yes, it's a five-second rule. Yeah, five five, four, one. three, two, one. Get yourself a push, and you're going to feel a lot better. How am I doing for time, Reginald? Well, your, your time is way <laughs> Can I show one more thing quickly? Really, I'll, I'll keep this quick. I want to prove to everybody there's hope. Like, if you have mental illness, and you're taking meds, and you feel super slow... Check out the power of evolution, right? This is this guy, episode one, Eric Thomas. Check this out. Check how, specifically, check how he talks. Check the vocabulary he has. Check the speed of his verbal fluency. Just his energy. Check this out. This is amazing. The power of the brain to rewrite itself. In I had this idea, right? Because like every Friday when I come to work, everybody's pumped up, full of energy, motivated, excited, right? Because it's Friday. They get to spend money, they get to rest, they get to party, right? But then when I come to work on Monday, it seems like everybody's energy is drained. You know, everybody is down, everybody's out. And so I start asking people, what's going on? They say it's Monday. And I'm like, you ought to be excited, it's Monday. So this is him 13 years in the future when he's like become a multimillionaire. He's eating amazing foods, he's biohacking, he's taking nootropics, all that stuff. Look how fast he talks now, and look how, like, the accuracy of his speech, the, the difference in the vocabulary he has. Like, if you're young and you're struggling for mental illness, don't give up, because in 10, 15, 20 years, your brain will continue to evolve and rewire yourself, and you can turn into this guy. Like, look at him now. What up, what up, what up, what up? It's your boy, E.T., and welcome to another edition of That's Right, Baby, Bring It From The Bottom, Thank God it's Monday! Now look, last week I told you you could have. I want people to have whatever they want to have. 
live the way. Don't you understand that when people deal with ET, like when you come to me, if you if you ain't having it, if you ain't getting it, you're pissed. Like for real, you pissed off. So That's all I wanted to show. Like, yeah, just don't give up because your brain can and will uh, evolve. Your brain can and will get better and particularly if you're young if you're like in your early 20s you're just a kid and your brain's nowhere near evolved yet don't give up because life's way better at 30 and i'm guessing i don't know but i'm guessing life's even way better at 40. so that's my talk